Hey what's happening guys welcome to e-reviews. So U Televentures recently launched their flagship of the year the U Unicorn. I wasn't able to get my hands on the review unit or a retail unit thanks to their stupid flash sales. But a huge shout out to techtalks.com for lending me their unit for my reviewing purposes. Be sure to check out their website for some good technology content. So I've been using the U Unicorn as my primary device for the past couple of weeks and I think it's a pretty good time for me to give out my full review. So without any further ado let's get started. As usual, let's start off with the design and build quality. The U Unicorn sports an all-metal unibody design with a brushed aluminum finish look to the back and a 2.5D glass which is a Corning Gorilla Glass 4 to the front. The device looks premium and feels really sturdy in the hand. The slight curve to the back and flat and chamfered edges to the sides provide that reassuring grip. Taking an overview of the device, up front to the top we have a bunch of sensors, the speaker grille and the 5 megapixel front facing camera. Below that we have the 5.5 inch full HD display with a pixel density of 401 pixels per inch as it also houses the touch capacitor buttons. Below that we have the home button slash fingerprint scanner which was fast and easy to set up and was accurate most of the times but there is a flaw which I will get to in a bit. At the bottom of the device we have the micro USB data syncing and charging port flanked by the primary microphone and the speaker grill. Now the micro USB port does support OTG but it does not support fast charging of any kind. Now that's a big deal breaker for me given the fact that it houses a massive 4000 mAh battery and I can't wait hours together for it to get completely charged. Anyways moving on to the right of the device we have the power button and the volume rockers which are also made up of metal and provide great tactile feedback. It's also got these two chamfer edges that run around the device adding to the overall premium look. To the left of the device we have the hybrid sim card slot which can either accept two nano sims or one nano sim and a micro sd card up to 256 gigabytes. To the top we have the 3.5 mm audio jack along with the secondary noise cancellation microphone. To the back as I mentioned earlier it's a metal body that houses the 13 megapixel primary camera with face detection autofocus and an aperture of f by 2.2. It's accompanied by a dual tone dual led flash and the U branding to the bottom. Now let's get to the flaws. The U Unicorn's got a great build quality, no doubt about it, but the design is definitely not original. In fact, it's a blatant replica of the Mizu M3 Note with some aesthetic changes as shown by Gogirana in his full review. Of course, U Televentures went on to deny it, but this theory is strengthened by the location and position of the home button slash fingerprint scanner. Let me explain. The button does not scan your fingerprint until and unless the screen is switched on or the button itself is pressed upon. Also, there's the presence of capacitive home button right above the hardware button which presents a lot of ambiguity. And if you're someone who's been affected by OCD like me, this confusion is really gonna get on your nerves. Now this home button slash fingerprint scanner fits well within the Flyme OS profile, but it doesn't really fit or blend in with the stock Android experience. And another important thing to mention is that the 2.5D glass is exposed. With a good weight of 173 grams, if the device falls face first, it's for sure that the Corning Gorilla Glass 4 will crack. Hence a protective case is highly recommended. Alright so let's get to the verdict. The U Unicorn looks good and it feels like a tank in your hand. But the design flaws is something that bothers me. Hence subjective to my opinion, the U Unicorn gets a decent score of 7 out of 10. Now moving on to performance, the U Unicorn with its specs is definitely a mid-ranger and nowhere close to a flagship as U claims it to be. The U Unicorn is powered by the Octa-Core Helio P10 processor coupled with 4GB of RAM and the Mali T860 MP2 GPU for the graphic end of things. Starting off with gaming performance, while some games like Asphalt 8 were absolutely not playable under high settings, the device seemed to handle Modern Combat 5 and Nova 3 with little to no issues. So I'm guessing it's to do with the optimization of the game rather than the device itself. And one more good thing to note about it is that the U Unicorn did not overheat upon extended hours of gameplay. I've made a dedicated video depicting the gaming performance, overheating check and the benchmarks of the U Unicorn so be sure to check that out, I'll leave a card to it right now. Now moving on to day to day experience, the device performed exceptionally well thanks to the near stock Android UI which U calls U steroids. There was absolutely no lags or stutters while navigating through the UI and even jumping between applications was nearly seamless. But here's where Unicorn falls flat on its face. It still runs on Android 5.1 Lollipop. Given the fact that its competitors are being shipped out as Android 6.0 Marshmallow, this is a huge drawback for the device. And given the track record of you when it comes to software support and updates, I'm not really being hopeful anytime soon. But there is something flagship about this device. 
It's the battery backup from the 4000 mAh battery. I usually got 2 days with normal usage and at least 1 day with heavy usage. And Usteroid also has a new setting called the monochrome setting. Once enabled, this turns the screen into black and white, hoping to save a couple of more percentage when it comes to battery backup. Now coming to camera performance, the 13 megapixel primary camera is above average. Color reproduction and dynamic range is good, but the amount of exposure always seems to be on the excess side. And with an aperture of f by 2.2, the depth of field is defined average at best. When it comes to artificial and low light conditions, the camera does seem to perform decently. The amount of noise is comparatively low, but the issue with exposure still persists. Moving on to videos, as I mentioned earlier, the Unicorn can shoot at a maximum of 1080p and the video turned out to be pretty decent, but again it still had the issues with amount of exposure. And thanks to electronic image stabilization, the videos turned out to be very stable. Moving over to the front of the device, we have the 5 megapixel front facing camera with an aperture of f2.0. And I must say that it's pretty good when it comes to that occasional selfie. But when it comes to videos, well, let's have a look. So this is a video from the front facing camera and the audio is from the onboard microphone. As much as I was satisfied with the selfies from the front facing camera, this is completely right opposite. There's absolutely no detail, a lot of artifacts and I'm pretty sure the front facing camera doesn't have any white balance or, of, or any processing of that sort because the colors are all off and there's nothing natural about it. Alright guys, so let's get to the verdict. Now you is marketing the Unicorn as their flagship of the year, but it's definitely no flagship or let alone close to one. As a mid-ranger, the performance is acceptable, but the price is not. At 12,500 rupees, you have better bets such as this Xiaomi Redmi Note 3, Le Eco Le 2, and the Lenovo ZUK Z1. So it's safe to say that you has fallen short quite a bit when it comes to the Unicorn, and subjective to my opinion, the Unicorn gets a decent score of 7 out of 10 under performance. Alright guys, so that was my full review of the U Unicorn. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Also like key reviews on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for some good tech information and fun giveaways. This is Santosh signing off for e-reviews. You guys have a great day.